Yeah. So there we go. How do you guys appreciate the, the, the bulletins that come out every week? You got them? You, know, you want to wave them? Okay, all right. You know, Nancy and Shauna put them together every week, and they're fabulous. They, they're so good, and very rare is the mistake they ever make. But this Sunday, you'll notice the verse of the week. It says, uh, Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. That's right on the money. But it's not found in Joel 2.11. <laughs> it's an incredibly rare, I mean rare with those two ladies. They just do not miss. They're incredible. They really are. What's that? None of your business. Anyway, 1 <laughs> Corinthians is where it's found. <clears throat> but it is amazing. I thought I would share a few other uh, church bulletin uh, announcements that kind of, uh, you know, I've heard of. This one from a church in Phoenix, Arizona. It said this one, Tuesday at 4 p.m., there will be an ice cream social. All ladies giving milk should come early. That was actually there. Here's one in Albany, Oregon. For those of you that have children and don't know it, there's a nursery downstairs. And this one from Fort Worth, uh, Texas. Ladies, don't forget the rummage sale. It's a good chance to get rid of things not worth keeping around the house. Bring your husbands. <laughs> Thought I'd share those with you. Speaking of sharing, we've been talking about sharing our faith uh, the last, I don't know, three or four weeks. I know Pastor Steve White did a fabulous word last week, and uh, we are so thankful, Steve, that you're part of our body. I am incredibly thankful about that. We talked about overcoming temptation as well. Today, we want to talk about the key ingredient to living a successful Christian life. How many of you guys want to live a successful Christian walk here while you're on the earth? What is it that's going to help us in our day-to-day -day lives, our, our job, our our family, our marriage with our kids. What is the key ingredient to being a better father, a better son, a better mother, a better daughter, an employee, a boss, a neighbor, and a friend? What is the key? It's the Holy Spirit. Simply put, the Holy Spirit. Some of you guys might know who Garrison Keeler is, Prairie Home Companion. Any fans of Prairie Home? I love that. I love that guy. But it's interesting. He was asked one time, what his favorite five books of all time were. Guess what his number one book is? The book of Acts. He says this, The flames lit on their little heads, and bravely and dangerously went they onward. What a great quote from Garrison Keillor. And the flames, of course, represent the Holy Spirit. And, you know, God has always desired to walk with people. He always has. It's, it's always been his M.O. In fact, in the book of Genesis, we see that God was walking in the cool of the evening. He, and who knows how many days, months, years that happened until the fateful day when Adam and Eve chose to do something they were told not to do, which separated them. Here's what it says in Genesis 3.8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden. He walked with people. He loves people. He wants to walk with us. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and they hid themselves. You see, that's what sin does. Sin makes us want to hide from God. But God immediately hatched a plan. And he, the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit decided that Jesus was going to take on human form. And he was going to pay the penalty of sin for all mankind. And it was going to all be lashed upon him. So that we could once again, if we so choose, could walk again with the Father. We could walk again with God. Fully restored, fully forgiven. And it's our choice as to whether we're going to accept the offer. That's the truth. Nobody else can make the choice for you. You see, God has children. He has no grandchildren. You either are his kid because you choose to be or you're not. 
Now, after Jesus accomplished his mission, he sent those who have received the free gift of salvation, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can once again is with us and actually in us. God with us, God inside of us. That is the Holy Spirit. One of the roles of the Holy Spirit is to search, as in a search engine, say, for example. The total number of servers Google employs, this is interesting, it's a well-kept secret, but one estimate puts the total at 2,376,000. Google performs over 100 billion searches per month. They're searching. How many remember using the card catalog file at the library? <laughs> I mean, talk about, that I means that took forever to find one stupid thing. Yet as remarkable as Google is, imagine what the Holy Spirit does. There's nothing he don't know. He knows every hair on your head, which for some is easier than others. But he knows everything. He knows every thought, every memory, every subliminal desire, the value of pi to the 10 millionth decimal. He knows it all instantly. You name it, the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, knows it. And he's searching all things all the time. The Holy Spirit is involved in so many areas of our life. One of the things that the Holy Spirit does is he helps us to discern He's like a burglar alarm. When it goes off, you know somebody has come in your house uninvited. Well, the Holy Spirit sets off a kind of an alarm too. He'll bring illumination to things that are in your life or could be in your life and aren't seen by the naked eye, but he lets us know. He has an alarm system, and he finds things. <clears throat> Speaking of that, Nancy and I went to California um, Last week, it was great to see my son, Max. He's actually back in town now, but, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> Hope I didn't bug you. <laughs> I love these dumb things. Really good on their teeth, too. But anyway, so we went through this, the airport security system, and, uh, you know, you got I usually get pre-TSA, which is so nice because I don't have to take off anything. I don't take off my shoes or my coat or anything. But this time I got it, and Na I didn't get it, but Nancy did. Usually it's the other way around. And so, anyway, so I had to go through the whole thing and take off your belt, take off your shoes, you know. And I'm going through, and, eh, eh, you know, the alarm goes off and step over here. I'm sorry, uh, it shows that you have something in this area. You sure you don't have a belt on? Nothing in your pockets? No. Okay, do we want to go behind the curtain? Behind the curtain for what? I got to do a full pat down. Are you serious? I said, just do it here. I was getting annoyed. In Jesus' name, I was getting annoyed. I thought, there's nothing. And so he starts doing the whole, you know, and I thought, man, have you ever served time? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was like, wow, he was getting really, really close everywhere. He couldn't find it until he found this in my back pocket. This stupid lifesaver package set off the alarm. <laughs> Hello! That's a warning to you. That's what they found. Can you believe that? I was so blessed. If that's what those stupid things can find, imagine what the Holy Spirit can find. <laughs> Alarms help us know something's not quite right, and the Holy Spirit will help you discern things. He'll set off an alarm. You know, he'll let you, he'll, he'll, sometimes he'll just... You're, you're facing a decision and you just, everything logically makes sense, but it just doesn't add up. There's just not that peace in your heart. You know, that's an alarm. It's like, or sometimes it'll just be a check in your spirit. You, you know what I'm talking about? There'll be some kind of a, hello, no, don't do that. Don't go over there. Don't sign that paper. Don't, you know, there's something not quite right. 
that person that's going to be watching your kids. Ah, you know, I'm not trying to make you afraid. Don't, please don't misunderstand. Don't, you don't want to walk in fear. But sometimes he'll let us know that something isn't quite right. The Holy Spirit alarms the soul. That reminds me, late one night, a burglar, a burglar broke into a house and, uh, that he thought was empty. He tiptoed through the living room. But he suddenly froze in his tracks when he heard a loud voice say, Jesus is watching you. Silence returned to the house. The burglar crept forward again. Again he heard, Jesus is watching you. The burglar stopped dead again. He was frightened frantically. He looked all around, and in a dark corner, he saw this stupid parrot. He asked the parrot, was that you who said, Jesus is watching me? He said, yes. The burglar breathed a sigh of relief and asked the parrot, what's your name? The parrot said, Moses. What a stupid name for a parrot, the burglar said. What idiot named you Moses? The parrot replied, the same idiot who named the Rottweiler Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is watching you. The Holy Spirit is watching you. He's in you. He sees everything. And he will help you discern evil spirits too. He will help you to discern something's not quite right here. The Holy Spirit is our leader. He leads us to Jesus. It's one of the things he does. He leads us to talk to others. He leads us to take risks. He fills us with boldness. He leads us to love other people, often the unlovely. And sometimes, believe it or not, the Holy Spirit leads us into trouble. He led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. But guess when he did it? Right after the dove of the Holy Spirit came upon him. You don't want to face temptation and trouble without the Holy Spirit. Even Jesus didn't want to face temptation without the Holy Spirit. He's leading is always unto something. He wants to build spiritual muscle in you and I. He wants to build faith. You're going to face trials. I got news for you this morning. You're going to face trials, troubles, problems, temptations, flat tires. Your kids might rebel. Your business might struggle. Not everything will go as you hope. But guess what? The God of heaven, the Holy Spirit is inside you, and he will never leave you, never forsake you. He can somehow make lemonade out of lemons. When the enemy brings the fiery darts of accusation against you and the fiery darts of walls being built in front of you and obstacles and problems, he is our protection as well. Somehow the Holy Spirit will help get us through the fire. I thought I'd do a little... Ah, a little science for you here. So, in and of ourselves, let's just say this is us. Let's just say this is you. And I'm not saying you're full of hot air, but, um, but let's just say this is you just by yourself, just with your own, you know, the breath of of life that God has given you and you're alive and you're just on your own and you're going through difficulties, trials, problems. You're getting close to the fire. What happens? But this is you again, full of hot air, but you also have the water of the Holy Spirit. He's down there. And you have the Holy Spirit in you. You've been, Jesus was baptized. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit came upon him. He went into the fire of temptation, just as you and I do. Huh. Huh. How 
about that? Doesn't matter how long you're doing it. Let's just change the angle. Huh. Now, life's going to leave a mark on you. Come on. You're going to go through difficulties and there's going to be a mark left on you. But guess what? Jesus is with you in the fire. The Holy Spirit is with you in the fire. little science lesson today. There you go. And yet the Holy Spirit is the God that we know so little about. Again, in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, it says, No one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I make known to you, no one speaking of the, by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is absolutely indispensable. Without the Holy Spirit opening up our eyes, we wouldn't have a chance to be saved. We wouldn't have a chance to come to the Lord. So about the Holy Spirit, we're just going to begin diving into it this morning. We're going to probably be in it a couple, two, three, four weeks. I don't know how long. But we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit for a while. First of all, about the Holy Spirit, He is my helper. He's my helper. Now, Some people are very uncomfortable hearing too much about the Holy Spirit. And I get it. And if you are uncomfortable hearing too much about the Holy Spirit, you're not alone. You know, the disciples didn't really like hearing about the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? It made them uneasy. You see, they had walked with Jesus for three years, and they were just starting to figure him out. They just kind of started. They knew his voice. They knew what he looked like. They knew what kind of food he liked. They knew... You know, they'd seen his miracles. He actually gave them the power to do miracles, signs, wonders. He, he'd been, they'd been walking with him. They finally got to know him. In fact, right before he was about to be crucified, they finally came to the realization, now we know you're who you say you are. And Jesus says, now you know? I'm about ready to go. My arrest is coming. It took him three years to figure it out. And now Jesus starts talking about, oh, by the way, I'm going to be leaving. See, change was coming, and guess what? Most people don't like change. See, they figured that Jesus was the long-awaited for Messiah that would finally remove the Romans from ruling over them. That's the Messiah that many of them were looking for. In fact, many believe that's why Judas betrayed Jesus. He finally figured it out. Oh, you're not going to overthrow the Roman government over us. Well, I might as well make some shackles off of you. But Jesus knew they were really getting nervous about his um, leaving them. And so he said to them in John 16, 7, and we should have it on the PowerPoint. Jesus says, but I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. You see, if I do not go away, the helper shall not come to you. But if I go, I'm going to send him to you. All you have to do is compare what the disciples were like when Jesus was still alive versus what the disciples were like after the Holy Spirit came on them. When the Holy Spirit in the form of flames of fire came on them, what a difference it made. When Jesus was arrested, you remember the story. The disciples all ran away. They bravely ran. They, They just ran away. They, in fact, Peter, who swore he would never deny Jesus, and Peter was kind of the top disciple, many sort of think, and uh, they said to him three times, you remember the story, hey, you know, you, you know, you know him, right? Uh, Sorry, I never know the man. I saw you with him. No, it wasn't me, somebody else. Three times he denied he knew his name. Why? Because he was chicken. In and of himself, he was very afraid. You know, that's what he was. But guess what happened after the Holy Spirit came upon them? They became bold as lions. And 11 of the 12 of the disciples were martyred willingly, happily. In fact, Peter was so moved and so full of fire because the Holy Spirit had come upon him. 
He got crucified, and when he did, they say that he got, he went, um, he actually says, I'm not worthy to be crucified in the same way Jesus was. Crucify me upside down. He didn't run away. They faced jail time. They were beaten. They were tortured. I'm not bending the knee. My Lord Jesus is king, and it was the Holy Spirit that gave him the fire to do it. And it was the Holy Spirit that had them go, and their handkerchiefs would heal people. <laughs> I mean, great miracles happen. See, the Holy Spirit is our helper, but guess what? The Holy Spirit is my helper. Jesus goes on in John 14, 16, and 17. He says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth who the world cannot receive. Aha. You don't get the Holy Spirit without having Jesus because it does not behold him or know him, but you, you know him because he abides with you and, oh, by the way, will be in you. The Holy Spirit is with you and he's also with you. When we say that we are the temple of the living God, what we really say is that the Holy Spirit of God lives inside of us. That's what really what we're saying. Now, the word another helper actually means one just like Jesus. What he was saying was, I'm going to send you another just like me. The same likeness, the same kind of thing he does, the same nature, same authority, but another one. Able to actually live inside of people. We are now the temples of God. Inside each person who has received the cleansing power of Jesus. Now, the word helper comes to us from the word paraclete, parakletos which means to come alongside. It means to be a counselor. He is our counselor. He is our advocate. He is our intercessor. He's our comforter. He's all those things and more. But that's what he means. And the Holy Spirit is fully able to uh, lead us in a direction we need to go. He is our ever-present helper. How many of you guys think that's pretty cool that God himself has been assigned to live inside of you to help you? to come alongside you, to comfort you, to actually intercede for you. He's my helper. He's your helper. Secondly, we need to know, and a lot of people forget, the Holy Spirit isn't weird. He isn't a kook. How many of you have been in a church service or heard of church services that people get really weird? You know, they, you know, Shout and dance and jump a pew, you know. You know, they're rolling around. They're barking like dogs. They're, you know, clucking like chickens. Whatever they're doing, you know. Well, though, I, I'm not going to say what, those, what that is, but it's weird to me. And, you know, sometimes people are just weird. Sometimes the Holy Spirit touches them and the flesh kind of gets in the way and they get a little weird. Now, they say that one in three people are weird. I want you to look to your left and your right. And if they ain't weird, guess who is? That's what I say. Now, the Holy Spirit isn't weird, but that doesn't mean that you and I get to figure out his ways. Here's what it says in Romans eleven thirty three: 33. Oh, the depths of the riches of both the wisdom and knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable are his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor? We don't need to call psychics for advice about the future. We don't need to consult mediums. We don't need to use tarot cards. We don't need to use a Ouija board. Some of you might have used a Ouija board in your younger years. Did you know they're making a comeback? These stupid Ouija boards are being sold again, and I guess in, in great numbers. It's just shocking to me. You know what a Ouija board is? It's really an invitation for a demon to mess with you. That's really what it is. And uh, you may just want to be aware that maybe your, maybe your kids or your grandkids are around. Uh, sometimes other kids are getting them for Christmas, no less. And they're playing around, and you just want to say, hey, you probably don't want to mess with that. But the Holy Spirit will tell you things you need to know about the future. He will tell you, John 16, 3, this is what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. He will tell you what is yet to come. He, the Holy Spirit will give you all you need to know. The Bible, 
the Holy Spirit, Jesus. That's really where you need to be checking it out. You don't have to be weird to be full of the Holy Spirit. Some people think they're being judged by other Christians if they don't speak in tongues, for example. One of, there are different denominations that teach that basically uh, tongues is the evidence, the evidence of being baptized and full of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to say this. I speak in tongues. I love it. I practice it. I enjoy it. It helps me. It's good. And when I'm praying in a tongue, it's as if the Holy Spirit himself is interceding for me and for others. It's wonderful. I encourage you to ask the Lord for it. Be ready to receive it. It's good. We're going to talk about that in the coming weeks at some point. But I don't think that praying in tongues and speaking in tongues is the evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. I think it's an evidence. It's not the evidence. You know what I think personally the evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit is? Change. It's change. It's change. A changed heart. A heart that used to hate and now loves. A person that was addicted to everything in the world and Things are being broken off of them. Somebody now who used to be terribly afraid of talking about Jesus with people suddenly want to talk about Jesus with people. Somebody who loves the unlovely, it's change. There's a new fire for God in your heart, a new desire to want to be with him. That's baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know what the Holy Spirit does? It draws us to Jesus. It fills us with power. That's the evidence of the Holy Spirit. It's change. And yet, how many of you know, we don't like change. And so sometimes we're nervous about the Holy Spirit because he asks us to change, and he's going to change us. We want to see the lost get saved. Again, the disciples are proof of that. When the Holy Spirit came upon them, their lives were radically changed. Actually, the Holy Spirit is your best friend while you're here on the earth. He's not here to make you weird. He's not here to make you all mystical and spooky, you know. Spooky. <laughs> He's not, he doesn't want to make you a kook. He doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to make you hyper spiritual. You know any hyper spiritual people? Oh, there's a demon under every rock and there's an angel under every, un, swinging on every pole. I mean, you know, just, I don't know what it is. They're just, hey, come on. Come on, man. The Holy Spirit, here's what he does. If you're full of him, you're not going to be full of hot air. You're going to be full of humility. He's going to make you approachable. He's going to make you, he's going to break you in some ways. He's going to give you the power to witness. He's going to give you boldness. He's going to take away a fear of other people. By the way, we would be a lot less worried about what others think of us if we only knew how seldom they do. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> we would be a whole lot less worried about what people think if we only knew how seldom they do. You know what the Holy Spirit does? He gives us his fruit. And guess what his fruit is? Love. Peace. Joy. Patience. Kindness gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. You want to know if you, if you want to see some evidence that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're going to see your love increase for people. You're going to see your love increase for God. You're going to see a fire in your belly to see other people saved. You're going to start having self-control. Maybe instead of a whole, a whole pint of ice cream, you'll have a half a pint. You'll start to see self-control. And he also gives good gifts. Prophecy, what a great gift that can be. Tongues, interpretation of tongues, different kinds of healings, administrations, all sorts of things. Faith, miracles, signs, wonders. He's not weird, but he does change you. He does change you. And he keeps changing you. It's not a one-time change. He keeps 
changing you. And the third thing is the Holy Spirit is God. Some people think there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit way down here. But do you know that the Holy Spirit can be talked to? You can talk to the Holy Spirit. You can actually worship the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? <laughs> Holy Spirit, I appreciate you. Holy Spirit, I appreciate you. You know, the old, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We're saying you are welcome, Holy God. You are welcome here. And you know what the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, which is a wonderful thing, and I can't explain it because I don't fully get it myself. They're the same nature. They're the same authority, all that, but they're just, they're three separate and yet totally joined together. But you know, it's interesting about the Holy, Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's no rivalry there. You know, there's no jealousy between them. It isn't like the Father, Son, you're talking too much about my son. What about me? What about my time? Jesus isn't saying, yeah, I don't know about all this Holy Spirit talk. Let's start focusing on me a little. Do you know what I did? Do you know what I came to do? It isn't like that. Jesus, I love you. The Father and the Holy Spirit are going, yes. Father, I love you. Jesus and the Holy Spirit, yes. Holy Spirit, I welcome you. I love you. The Father and the Son are going, go for it. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God. And you know, the Holy Spirit was involved in creation, as was Jesus, it says in Colossians. But in Genesis 1 2, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Genesis 1 26, then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them rule. And then John 14 23, Jesus says something very sim similar. He says, If anybody loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. He's not talking about angels. Jesus is talking about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is eternal. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God? The Holy Spirit, through people, wrote the Bible. Did you know that? It says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. 1 Peter 1.20 goes a little farther and it says it this way, no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation, but men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit breathed the word into existence. And as God, the Holy Spirit leads us too. Rarely does he speak with an audible voice, but you can learn to hear him. You know, even animals can hear him. Uh, I can hear, uh, hear us anyway. They can discern uh, the voices of their, uh, their owners or whatever. We know elephants can do that. <clears throat> you know, I think I told you one time about our cat, Gus. Um, and, I, and, and my cats are fine. I mean, we're... We had three, and now we're down to two, and it's getting better all the time. <laughs> it really is. But <clears throat> we, uh, no, but I like our two cats. They're, they're nice and, uh, <clears throat> that, that we have. And, uh, but Gus is the most mellow cat in the history of catdom. I mean, he, anybody can pick him up. He doesn't ever do anything. You can play with his paws. He doesn't ever do anything. You just, you can pull his tail. He doesn't do anything. You pat him on the head. He's really a good cat. I'm not saying you should do those things. I'm just saying he puts up with it, and he, he's fine. He's just there. He's just a big walking carpet, I guess. And we do like him. He's very gentle. He's very good. But one time, uh, you know, one morning we noticed Gus didn't show up for his, you know, breakfast. And, hmm, that's weird, and, you know. Wasn't, he, he didn't come all afternoon, didn't come all evening, and then the next day he wasn't there. I think a couple of days were going by. Oh, man, what happened? Maybe he got eaten up by a coyote or a raccoon or something. But, so finally, Rachel said, we need to go to the uh, Humane Society. Okay, so I didn't go, but Nancy went. And uh, they're looking around, and they don't see Gus in the cages there, and uh, they didn't say anything. And I don't, was it you or, or uh, were you the one? Huh? You were the one? 
you said, you called out for Gus. You said, yeah, it looks like Gus is not here. That's all she said. And that was all it took for Gus to what? He had somehow gotten out of the cage. He's very smart. He gets that from my side of the family. But anyway, <laughs> somehow he, he'd escaped, and as soon as he heard her voice, out he came. And uh, the, uh, that's all she had to say. You know, I guess Gus isn't here. And all of a sudden, you know, and he walks over, and the, and the worker said, oh, don't be too sure, you know, it's just, you know, no. And then she... <laughs> She grabbed him. No, I'll find out in a second. Pulled open his legs. That's Gus. <laughs> Somehow she knew all the scratch or whatever. He was there. The point is, pets know their master's voice. You can know the master's voice. And it's the Holy Spirit who breathes it into you. And he doesn't say anything on his own initiative. He hears from Jesus who hears from the Father. And he speaks it into your life. Holy Spirit is God with you, Rob, and he's God in you. He's the Holy Spirit of God in you and with you. He's in you and he's with you and he loves you and he's guiding you. And he's guiding you to Jesus and he's also guiding you to have success in this life. Not success as the world says it necessarily but as he says it. The Holy Spirit often says yes, by the way. But sometimes he says no. Acts 16, 1 and 2, Paul and his companions traveled through the region of Phrygia, I don't even know how to say that, in Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, all fun names, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to go. Hmm. That's weird. They wanted to go minister in Asia. Holy Spirit said no. They wanted to go to another place. Holy Spirit said no. The Holy Spirit would not allow them to go. So they passed on and went somewhere else. I don't know about this whole building thing, but I'll tell you this. I think the Holy Spirit kind of is whispering, I, I, I feel like he is, keep knocking. Keep knocking. Keep going. Whether it's this or something else, I think it's this. But if it's not, I hope you keep giving. I hope you keep going. I hope you keep at it. You know, it just sometimes uh, things don't always happen in our time frame. But we got to, I think we're just going to keep, we're going to keep plugging. We're going to keep knocking. Ask and the door will be open and you knock, you know, uh, keep knocking, keep seeking, keep asking. Whatever it is that's going on in your life, and keep hearing the Lord talk to you because he loves you and he cares for you, and the Holy Spirit is with you. Heavenly Father, thanks for loving us. Thanks for being so good to us. Thanks for being our protector. Thanks for being inside of us. Helps, thank you for helping us get through the fire. Thanks for being our helper, our guide. Thanks for being God in us, and thanks for continually changing us to be the people you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. And you're out three minutes early, and the whole church said, amen. Yes.